Here we go, Shadow. Help me make this video. 12 million light years from our galaxy, the Milky Way, are two galaxies, M81 and M82. M81 known as the Bode's Galaxy and M82 known as the Cigar Galaxy. We're going to image both galaxies tonight in the same frame because they're relatively close to each other. In fact, they interact with each other gravitationally. But it's M82 we want to pay particular attention to because M82 is an enigma. M82 is a unique galaxy for a lot of reasons, one of which is the shape, thus the cigar galaxy. It is a spiral galaxy, but it's big and fat and bloated in comparison to a typical spiral galaxy. It's emitting tremendous radiation in all directions, giving it a really peculiar look. But that's just one reason why it's unusual. It also holds unraveled mysteries. In 2010, a team of astronomers in Manchester, England, detected unusual radio signals coming from M82. The discovery of these radio signals unleashed a flurry of activity, with radio detecting observatories pointing their huge antenna, antennae towards the galaxy, trying to understand what these signals were. They were theorized to be possibly pulsars, possibly the effect of interacting black holes. A number of theories emerged, and then silence. The radio signals didn't go silent. The news, the buzz, the hype went silent. Go ahead and Google it. You'll see what I mean. There was so much excitement about it. And then everybody stopped talking about it. And yet those radio signals continue to this day. And if that isn't strange enough, not too long ago, scientists observed a brilliant bright object in M82 emitting light that is so intense and the radiation coming from the object defies what is known as the Eddington limit. The Eddington limit describes the balance between nuclear fusion going on inside the star that produces light and energy and radiation that pushes outward and the gravitational pull of the star that pulls it back in and creates an equilibrium and thus a star is in balance. If it gets out of balance something's going to happen. Either it's going to implode in on itself and explode or it's going to explode and then implode in on itself like a supernova. But it can't continue in a constant state of exceeding the Eddington limit. It has to either be in equilibrium or exploding or compressing. It can't just continue indefinitely out of balance. And yet this object does. So there you have it. A weird cigar shaped, brilliant, bright neighboring galaxy emitting radio signals that can't be explained and nobody seems to want to talk about it anymore. And the home of a bright, brilliant object that violates our known understanding of physics and the Eddington limit. I think it's worth taking a look at, don't you? Tonight we're going to do just that. Shadow, you have dirt all over your nose. No, you're going to go, oh, well, it's just sand. Oh. <sighs> Jack Russell Terriers. He's actually a mix between a Jack Russell and a Fox Terrier. Two Hyper Terriers. He's got the energy of both of them combined squared. You know, I do a lot of research to try and understand some of these objects that we go after, but uh, some of you are far more advanced than I am, and some of you have left comments that are just profound. So if you know anything that I don't with regards to the Cigar Galaxy, the strange radio emissions, the brilliant bright object that defies the Eddington limit, please share those thoughts in the comments. We're going to set up the telescope, and we're going to see what we can do tonight. We're going to be imaging from the backyard tonight, but the city lights are behind us. There's only a few houses and then Red Cliff Country heading northwards, so the light pollution does not come from that direction. And fortunately, my neighbor is older and goes to bed real early. So 
that helps out too. We're going to be imaging tonight with the Orion Maxitoff Newtonian Telescope. This is a phenomenal astrograph. It's a 190 millimeter aperture. I've got the cap on it right now, but I want to show you what a Maxitoff Newtonian Telescope is. This is stubborn. The Maxitoff Newtonian Telescope has a lens at the front. Your Newtonian telescopes typically only have a mirror in the back. The light comes in through the aperture, reflects off of the mirror down at the bottom, reflects back up and hits a secondary mirror that you might be able to see right there, and then through the eyepiece. The weakness in the Newtonian telescope is called coma, where as you reach towards the edge of the mirror, the stars start to get elongated. The Maxitoff Newtonian telescope has a lens in the front that corrects for that. It just starts to refract the light, particularly the part that is towards those edges, so that you don't get that coma or that elongation. This is made specifically for astrophotography, although you know you can view through it, but it really is an astrograph. It's on an Atlas EQG mount, very good mount for tracking. I've gotten better at my guiding, so all we need now is for the skies to cooperate. And you can see there as the sun is setting behind my home, it's reflecting off of the, the clouds. There's an airplane up there, but they're very thin and the forecast has it clearing up. But the forecast tends to change on a dime here in the desert. So cross our fingers. If not, we'll image tomorrow night. But let's uh, cross our fingers and hopefully we can go after M81 and M82 this evening. Okay, we have enough time on the target to show it to you. We have uh, 35 minutes of data and gathering more. The clouds have come over a couple of times and slowed us down because we've had to uh, wait until they passed. But they've cleared up a little bit again and we're going to get an hour on this. But we have enough now to show it to you. So let me turn off the light here. All right. We have right here are the two galaxies on the left, M82, the Cigar Galaxy, on the right, M81, the Bodes Galaxy, both of which are approximately 12 million light years from Earth, both of which are in the constellation Ursa Major, the Big Bear, of which the Big Dipper is a part of, and uh, both of which are part of what is known as the M81 Galaxy Group, a group of approximately 34 galaxies uh, that uh, are all in Ursa Major. Now I'm going to zoom in on first the Bode's Galaxy, M81, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Now you're looking at an image that I'm filming on a little laptop monitor. When I process this tomorrow, it will look much, much better. But you can see even now, this is a beautiful, what is called a grand design spiral galaxy. It has well-formed, big, large arms that spiral around. It's a good-sized galaxy, approximately 96,000 light years in diameter. It has a supermassive black hole. That's a, that's a really big black hole in the middle of it and circling around the black hole is a very intense star forming region so it's got a bright core this uh, Bode's galaxy m81 is studied often by astronomers to help us understand more about star formation our own galaxy the milky way even though it's 12 million light years from earth it's close in space-time. <laughs> uh, it's a nearby neighboring galaxy of ours. Now it interacts gravitationally with its neighbor and you can see why it is called the Cigar Galaxy. In fact I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. Look at that thing. That is a weird looking galaxy. This is a smaller galaxy. It's approximately 24,000 light years in diameter, but it too is an intense star-creating galaxy. Thus, it is called a starburst galaxy.
It too has spirals, but it radiates out energy, and light, and radiation in all directions, giving it that kind of bloated look. And as we know, it's home to strange and yet to be completely understood radio signals that we talked about earlier and the very bright object that defies the Eddington limit. So there's odd things going on in this here cigar galaxy. Now when I process these tomorrow, it'll look a whole lot better than what you're seeing right now. This is called electronically assisted astrophotography where we're seeing the images build live on the computer screen. It's really cool to be able to do this, but they still look a whole lot better when we uh, take our time and properly process them tomorrow, which we'll do, and we'll show it to you then. Good night.